Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, September 3rd with Simon Borg. I'm Jason Sagani and Simon, who would have thought coming out of this weekend that the biggest news stories would have both been coming out of Seattle, Columbus. Seattle gets a 1-0 victory over the crew with only 10 men for about 80 minutes of that game. And that was enough to send Robert Warzija packing the crew, firing their head coach. Well, the crew owner and GM say that game really wasn't the trigger, that they already decided they weren't going to bring Robert Warzija back at the end of the season. It but certainly it- helped. But if there's a time to do it, this was the right. time because I think that team was so dejected after really not doing anything against a Seattle team that was down to 10 men in front of a big crowd at home. So they make the move now. It's an important juncture. Two games coming up this week, a Wednesday and a Saturday. Brian Bliss now takes over, coming down from the technical director position. I like the move because the technical mm-hmm. director, he holds all, he pulls all the strings to player moves. And right. these guys know if they don't perform for him, they could be on their way out. I like it. All right. Well, one of the questions I think crew fans are asking right now is – Guillermo Vara Scalotto may be the coach to come in next season. I know Brian Bliss, though, has put his name in the hat, so a lot to think about there. The other story coming out of this game, of course, Eddie Johnson scoring the game-winning goal, flashing the money sign, saying, pay me, pay me. Now, we've known that this has been a story for a little while. Eddie Johnson, once they put, spent the money on Clint Dempsey, Eddie Johnson was saying, hey, what about me? The question is, Simon, was this the right time to do it? And then looking forward, what does this mean for Seattle? I don't think it was the right time in that game. Your team is down a man. It's early in the game. You just scored. you got to buckle down. You're on the road. Dire circumstances. Uh, also, I think timing is off because, look, you just scored a record 14 goals last year. Your agent, or whoever represents you, needs to be talking during the offseason, not after uh, Seattle Sounders have just signed two more DPs and they're maxed out at three. So for me, this was way off on many levels by Eddie Johnson. All right, well, there's a couple questions that come out of it. If Eddie Johnson does get a raise, does he become a designated player? If he does become a designated player, what does that mean for Mauro Rosales, potentially the odd man out here? But does Eddie Johnson score this many goals without him? I think over the last couple of years, we've seen he needs Mauro Rosales. All right, let us know what you think of Eddie Johnson's celebration. Should he get a raise? Should he become a designated player? Let us know in the comments section below. Well, Monday was the close of the transfer window in a bunch of the big European leagues, and Simon... Kai Kamara of Sporting Kansas City, he was sent over to Middlesbrough for what Kansas City is calling a substantial offer. Now, that's been reported at about $1.4 million. And look, when you look at the long-term effects here, it's great for Kansas City. They're going to get about $650,000 in allocation money. That's the part of the transfer fee that can go towards allocation. But the question is, how does it affect them this year in MLS play? and in Champions League. I know a lot of people are saying Kai Kamara is the key piece to this Kansas City side, and I think they're farthest from the truth. Suni Saad, CJ Sapong, Teal Bunbury, all healthy, all available, all more than capable of filling in for Kai Kamara. Uh, I think the system in Kansas City is bigger than Kai Kamara himself. I know he's been productive in that system. And plus, for a guy like Kai Kamara in this league, he's not a DP, he's not necessarily the face of your franchise. I know he's popular. These are the kind of guys you got to cash in when you can, especially after they had him on display against Norwich. You don't want too much time to pass from that. So I think they struck while the iron was still hot. All right, remember Dom Dwyer, another guy you didn't mention there in the Sporting Kansas City attack. This could mean, though, reinforcements in the offseason for that second-half push in Champions League could be a good thing for Rob Heineman and Sporting Kansas City. Well, Simon, another weekend with some great goals, including two bicycle kicks. So let me ask you, better bicycle kick, Javier Morales or El Cubo Torres? I think it's Morales' uh, bicycle kick because it's more difficult to me to do a bike and angle the ball the way he did away from the keeper than Kubo Torres. He just went up and just hit it, and the goalkeeper can get to it. What about the fact that Kubo Torres was defended, at least on the beginning of the play? Mm-hmm. Morales was wide open. You said at least on the beginning. That wasn't tough defending. That wasn't marked. All right, so let me ask you this then. Better goal, Morales or Benny Failheiber? Morales still because Benny Failheiber, that shouldn't even have been a goal. Dom Dwyer commits a foul on Hendry Thomas. That play should have been stopped early. More on that on instant replay. All right, I was going to say, you're getting an right. instant replay pug in here, aren't you? All right, this brings us to the Castrol Index. And the guy that you didn't vote for, Eric Kubo Torres, is on top of the weekly list here. And at number two, Robbie Keane of the LA Galaxy. For my money, best player of the weekend. Two goals and an assist against San Jose. At three, Alvaro Saborio finds the net again against Portland. Number four, Mike McGee. And at five, Troy Perkins, goalkeeper for Montreal Impact. He gets a shutout against Philadelphia. Now taking a look at the yearly rankings, Marco DeVaio of the Montreal Impact atop the list. 
and it reads like a MVP candidate list here. Because at number two, Donovan Ricketts, goalkeeper for the Portland Timbers. At three, Robbie Keane of the LA Galaxy, making a real big push here at the end of the year. Number four, Mike McGee of the Chicago Fire. And at five, Blas Perez of FC Dallas continues to be a big part of that team. All right, well, we mentioned some of the great goals. You can vote on Goal of the Week on the site. And don't forget to check out Instant Replay. Apparently, Simon has a lot to talk about. We'll be back on The Daily tomorrow.